everyone and welcome to the Farmingdale Public Library's online craft time. Today we will be doing an artworks program based on the work of Edgar Degas. This painter is most known for his impressionistic-like portraits of ballerinas, although during his own lifetime Degas considered himself a realist. Edgar Degas was born in 1834 and died in 1917. He lived most of his life in Paris, France. Towards the end of his life, he was actually losing his vision, so he transitioned from being a painter to a pastel artist and even became a sculptor. As you could see on screen here, we do have some of his most famous works. Some like this are pastel, um, but others you'll see are paintings or sculptures. Today, our project will be based on the painting Fan de Chabesque, which in English would be the end of the arabesque, a type of ballet dance, and we will be doing this today with some slightly unusual materials. For this project, you will need some heavy paper, some oil pastels. You can also use crayons, but the blending step at the end will not work with crayons. You will need a paintbrush, some glue, a little bit of water, a pencil, scissors, and last, a cupcake paper. For this project, we're going to first start with our cupcake paper. I'm going to fold the paper in half and cut along the ridge to make sort of donut shape. This cupcake paper is going to be the ballerina's skirt. So, in this painting, the ballerina's skirt is taking up most of the picture, and it's just slightly off of center. So we're going to think about where it is that we want it, and which side sits better. I think that side is good. So I'm going to take my glue, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down my ballerina's skirt. Now for this project, I would suggest putting some newsprint or an old tablecloth on your table. When we start blending the colors, the paper could get a little bit soggy. So there we go. I'm going to glue down my ballerina's skirt nice and flat. Now our next step is going to be to draw our ballerina. I'm going to use my pencil for this, but you could skip right to the pastels if you're feeling confident. First thing I'm going to do is think about where her face goes in relation to her skirt. And in the background we have some Tchaikovsky music, known for his ballets, and also Tchaikovsky lived around the same time. So I'm going to first start by drawing my ballerina's head. I'm going to make this kind of like an egg shape with her chin being the pointy side of the egg. Next I'm going to figure out where I should put her neck. I'm going to draw a little bit of a triangle there and her shoulders should come out this way and end at about the edge of the skirt. See how her head is here? Her body is about the same length as her head once more. So, next I'm going to give her a little bit of a shape and draw the neckline of her dress. Next, we're going to draw the ballerina's arms. Now, if you look at the picture here, her arm is about as long as two of her head. One head from the elbow to the shoulder and one head from the elbow to her hand. So that's something that we're gonna keep in mind with our picture. So I'm gonna make a mark that her elbow should be about here. And one more time, that the end of her arm should be about here. Now this is approximate, of course. This is why we're working in pencils. If you don't like it, you can always erase it. But for her arms, I'm going to take my pencil and lightly draw two ovals with my dance of her arm. Now with this, you always want to draw lightly so that the pencil marks don't show through at the end. And I would suggest drawing in the direction of your cupcake liner rather than going against the grain of it. So there's her elbow. And one more oval 
on the other side of the room. Now, since this is pencil, we can erase it if you don't like the way the lines look. I'm going to do the other arm over here. One elbow, and then about the length of her head, which would be about here. And one more time. Now, with the oils for your forearm, you want to think about one side being flat and one side being slightly curved. Let me roll up my sleeve so you can see it a little better. There we go. Anyway, for our hands, since our dancer has on one side a hand holding a bouquet of flowers, we can just start with a little circle here for now. We'll come back to that. Now, if you're finding that you want your skirt to be bigger, you can always take a second cupcake paper, cut it again, and cut the sides of it, add a little bit more depth. I'm going to tuck this underneath my first one, give her a little bit more ruffles, and then stick some glue in to glue it back in. So this is going to be a very poofy dress on mine. Two colors. Now, what's so much fun about this as well is that Edgar Degas, later in his life, was a sculptor. So, why not have some three-dimensional art? His most famous piece of sculpture was called Dancer, Little Dancer, aged 14, and it was made of bronze. So I think we can do some paper in our sculpture. That should be fun. Okay, you can keep going and add more cupcake papers if you would like. I'm going to keep mine less crowded so that you could see my pencil marks better. Anyway, where were we? Right, we were drawing our hands. So from here, I'm going to add the bouquet of flowers, which this kind of looks like a big flower shape with a cone behind it. Since we're drawing in a kind of impressionist style, we can keep this pretty general for now. I'm going to just suggest with my pencil here some little circles with some fried egg shapes around it to make my flowers. When we color this in with pastels, we can certainly do more details, but this is just so I know where the flowers go. Next, I'm going to continue the line of my dancer's body down and imagine that her waist would probably end right about where my skirt ends. So then from here, I'm going to draw just the hint of her knee and the rest of her leg, again being an oval with one side kind of flatter than the other, and her shoe. So a foot is usually got a circle for the ankle and then another oval with a point towards the end. And then I'm going to fill that in across for her leg. Okay. Now let's go back to doing the hand up here. I like to make a sort of flattened circle. And then one oval curved off to the side for the thumb. And then we'll do sort of round and triangle over here for her fingers. From there, I can fill in her fingers and erase my guidelines afterwards. So there we go. I'm going to clean up the line of her arm just a little bit better. Erase some of my extra pencil marks. And we're going to need one more foot for our dancer behind the skirt. So I'm going to draw her foot over here. Looks like she's got her toes pointed. And there's the sole of her shoe, and I'm going to fill in the point there for her shoe. Alrighty. Actually, let's give her a bit of a knee back here so that it looks like she has a knee that's bending. Okay, next we're going to draw her face, since we like the rest of her body. Now at this point, if you don't like the way that your ballerina's body is shaped, you can always go back and erase part of it, come back to this video, and then we'll keep going. Anyway, I'm going to draw in her face, again going with the grain of my cupcake paper. So here we 
go. I'm going to give her a little bit of the backwards L for a nose. Backwards L. A little bit of a smile. This dancer does seem to have a kind of big nose, so we're going to keep that the same. I'm going to give her some eyebrows. And for my eyes, I like to make first an upside down U for the eyelid, and then give her a little bit of a circle. And yet another U for underneath her eye. Now this dancer here has long hair, so let's give her a braid. To do a braid, I like to do a bunch of circles that are connected together, and then some points at the end. So there we go. There's her braid going over her shoulder, over her skirt. So there's your dancer. And next we're going to think, where is our stage ending? I'm gonna say a little more than halfway in this picture. And then up here we have some curtains. Now these are definitely impressionistic curtains. They're more of a suggestion. So I'm gonna just do a kind of wiggly outline of where I want my curtains to fall. So they're gonna take up part of my picture like that. And then you can fill in some dancers in whatever poses you would like up here. I'm going to just draw in a few very quickly down here, like this one towards the front, who's got her arms out to the side, kind of like the Fortnite dance almost. And I'm going to just give her a quick little skirt. Now the dancers over here are more suggestions than really defined figures. So you can draw these a little bit quicker if you want. and it's all right if they have a little bit less definition to them. So there's my dancer's little choo-choo. And I'm going to give her one foot going that way and one foot going this way. Okay. I should probably give her a nose because we can see her face in profile over here. Next. And one more dancer for right now over here but you can add in a whole group of dancers. For right now, I think I'll have this one doing the Macarena because that looks fun. And maybe we'll make her stand on her toes. But you can fill in dancers doing whatever kind of poses you would like, or you can copy the picture. This slideshow here is available on the comment section of these links. Or you can always do an image search for Edgar Degas. That's spelled E-D-G-A-R, last name D-E-G-A-S. Anyway, since we have our impressionistic outline, the next thing we need to do is color with our oil pastels. So we are going to first start with our ballerina skin tone. I like to work from the lightest pastel color first all the way to the darkest color so that this way we can blend the colors together. So I'm going to first start by adding my ballerina's outfit and her skin. So I'm going to first color in her hands. Now this is why it's very important that you use very light pencil marks. The darker you draw with your pencil, your pastels might look a little bit muddy. See, I tried to draw extra dark here so that everybody could see, but my arm got a little bit muddy in the process. So I'm gonna color this in. There we go, I'm gonna go a little bit darker over the top of my cupcake liner. Down here to her hand. Now, with these pastels, you can go a little bit darker with them, a little bit heavier if you want a more consistent coat. This will be better when you do the blending later on. So, since she seems to be wearing stockings in this picture, I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow, because there's a bit of yellow in her stocking, and the skin tone, and start mixing them together. See how I did the yellow first on the bottom and then the pink over the top? It makes it a lot easier to see. So, I'm going to give my ballerina some very light pink shoes. Oop, I forgot to color her skin in the shoe. Uh oh, there we go. We'll go back and do that. Some yellow, 
And now I'm gonna give her light pink shoes because I think those would be a nice color for some ballet shoes. Okay. And her skirt seems to have some colors in it too. There's green, there's golden yellow, which we have green and golden yellow in here, but there's also a bit of lavender and a tiny bit of pink. First, I'm gonna color in the shirt of her dress, which is yellow, just like our cupcake paper. And then I'm gonna add, again, to be an impressionist and suggest some colors, I'm going to add a little bit of a pink and a little bit of a lavender to it. Now see, with this project, it's very important that you color with the grain of your cupcake paper and not press too hard so you don't rip the paper. So I'm gonna do, see, I ripped the paper because I pressed too hard. That's okay, a little bit of glue will fix that up. There's no such thing as a mistake in art. There's only a chance to change your picture. So I'm gonna add my pink and I'm gonna add a little bit of that lavender as well. I'm gonna add a little bit of the lavender to the bottom of my picture because I think that'll look extra nice and extra impressionist. Okay, now since our dancer has darker hair, I've waited to do that until after I color the skirt. Let's find a nice dark brown. How's this one look, guys? And now I'm gonna color in first her bangs. Again, I'm going with the grain of my cupcake paper. I think I'll make her bangs a little bit longer. And then I'm gonna color her hair, again, with the grain of my cupcake. Okay, so there we go. There is her hair. And next one, don't we color? How about some of the floor? Can you tell me what colors are in here? I see some brown and some green and some darker green and then some lighter green right before the stage. Oh, but before we do that, we should definitely color our flowers. So I see some blue and some pink flowers. So let's do blue and how about some rosy pink flowers? So to make my flowers, I'm going to be drawing lots of little loops, like a cloud, but very, very, very close together. And I'm going to do some light pink colors too. And some blues. I think I'm going to give a couple more blue flowers than in the original picture. And how about a purple flower too? So there we go. We've got our purple flowers, we've got our pink flowers, our blue flowers. Now we need the wrapper around it. And that's kind of a turquoise color. So I'm going to take, just go like my pink, take some turquoise, go like that very lightly. I think I'll add some green in so we blend those together. There is some green in here from the leaves anyway. And then over the top of that, we will do some green and a darker green. So we go for our outline and then add some green. Now don't be afraid to mix colors and blend them together for this project. This will make the project even better. You want this project to be colorful, even though our colors are some here. Okay, next we have a very light peachy white paper around my flower. So I'm gonna just do a light white outline and then go with another just a tiny bit of peach. This is more to suggest the paper than anything else. Oh, and a little bit of yellow to that. And a little bit coming out behind her hand. There we go. Nice. So let's color the floor now. We've got some brown. A little bit darker by her legs. And I think we're gonna need some green in this brown. Don't be afraid to blend these colors together. I actually even need a darker brown on this. So 
I'm using three or four different browns here, and that's fine. If you want at the end, you can add even more cupcake liners to make the skirt even fuller. But for right now, I'm gonna just stick with these two. So, I have here one, two, three different browns, and one green. I think we'll do the same on this side, but with a little bit more green under the flowers. So here's my green. Oh, you can see there's a little bit of a brown stuck on my green pastel still. I'm gonna fill this in. I'm gonna actually fill this all in with the green because the green is really the base color to this picture. You can also experiment with different types of pressure, some of which heavier, some lighter, to make different effects. So let's add a little bit of this gold. And some more of the brown. So I want the floor to look dark. Except for right underneath the stage where we're going to have a nice stripe of very light green. There we go. Now this will become a little bit more obvious as we blend our pictures. But first I'm going to fill in with a little bit more brown on the floor. Over here I'm going to color a little bit lighter and then a little bit darker underneath my dancer to show some shadows. Now for this project, you probably will want to hold down your paper a little bit better so you can get more effective pressure. So I'm going to blend all these different browns. Again, it is darker towards the dancer's body. We can even do a little black in here to make it even darker. There we go. Okay. So there we have our floor. I'm going to put a little bit of gold on the side. That's not a lot of huge. And now let's color our dancers. They seem to be wearing mostly lavender or white dresses, and their skin seems to be even paler because they're further back in the background. So I'm going to just very lightly go over my figures and suggest their skin tone. They have skin. And very lightly, I'm going to fill in just a little bit of the color on their dresses. Because as you can see, it is kind of washed out, especially in the foreground. To the sides, there's a little bit more color. So I might give this dancer over here a little bit more color in her dress. But even then, I'm still going to make it mostly the lavender color. Uh, let's give this one more. Goldish gray dress. There we go, bronze dress. And we should probably give them some hair. So, how about some brown hair for this dancer? And how about. Let's give this dancer some yellow hair. Most of the dancers in this picture are brunettes, but we don't have to stick to that if we don't want to. This is more about making a project that you're happy with. We're also here to have fun today. I'm going to learn a little bit about it. Okay, so since I've got my figures suggested, with fanfare, let's color in some curtains. So these curtains are mostly blue and green. I'm going to take my blues and my greens and this lovely dark turquoise pastel. And I'm gonna start making my curtains. Again, I'm burying the pressure so that darker areas have more pressure and lighter areas have less pressure. I'm gonna start with this turquoise as the base coat. It looks like behind us we have a little bit of light blue on the stage. I'm going to fill that in with just this blue here. And then I'm going to add some highlights to my curtains as well. 
this light bulb. So we're building layers of color here. Okay. How about some shadows now? We'll add some of this dark green that we were using before. That color really pops in here. Now, right now we've got a lot of blue and not too much green, so it looks kind of like the dancers are underwater, but we'll get more green in there. We're building from the lightest color up. So next we'll use some medium green and then some dark green. The curtains are darker towards the bottom, so we will get there. I'm just going to make this fold a little bit more. some of this dark green really fill in some of the curtains over here shadow now you can if you want to do different colors for your curtains there's nothing stopping you from doing that at home i'm just going by the same colors that are in big guys original work and this curtain is dark up here so i'm going to really layer on that dark green up top a little bit darker over here as well and then we're going to add in you guessed it a little bit of brown so there is some brown in this curtain we're going to add a little bit of that again we're going lightest to darkest and a little bit of gray blend it together a little better make it a little less harsh Now, if you don't like it with the pastel, you can always take your finger and smudge it. Actually, that leads me to something that's coming up very soon. I'm going to add a little bit more black on top here, and I'm going to smudge it again. Because there's only a tiny bit. Okay. So your fingers will get a little bit smushy with this project, but don't worry, this washes right off. Down here at the bottom of the stage, we have a little more shadow, so I should add a little bit of that one behind the other ones again. Perfect. Okay. Just to make it nice. Let's add a little bit of a pink highlight in our curtains, because there is a little bit of pink in here. Okay, and there's a little bit of pink on our stage over here, and again right down here on this corner. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Oh, uh, we'll add it. Let's add a little more pink to her dress to make it stand out a little more. You can always go over your colors again a second time if you want them to stand out more. It's always better to start lighter. Okay, so when you're satisfied with how you've colored it in, you can smudge your pastels. If you've been working with crayons, this step will not work. Unfortunately, crayons do not blend especially well. With your fingers, you can blend your pastels by pressing them together like this and pressing them to the paper to smudge your colors. Or, if you want to use a paintbrush, you can. You can use a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of water to blend your colors together, like I'm doing here. But you don't want to use too much or you'll soak the paper and then you'll end up with just a mushy mess. So if you choose to do the water method, just be very careful and maybe work on some new spray. But 
can see is how I'm painting all the colors in my flowers and mixing together. I think that looks really nice. If you really want to make your colors runny, you can use vegetable oil or baby oil instead of water, and that'll look really nice. But it gets a little bit slimy. So I'm gonna quickly finish my curtains up here. I'm gonna paint this section a little bit faster. Now you want your brush to be not too wet for this. Just damp enough that the color is smudged, but not so much that you erase your paint, or rather, erase your pastels. The idea of creating the impression of a ballet scene. Not a complete ballet scene, but the idea of it, or the impression of it. If you choose to blend on your cupcake liner, again, go in the direction of the ridges. Don't want to go across the brim because you might melt it. Okay, so I'm going to blend her hair a little bit, blend her dress, blend our background, and since we have just the shadows of our dancers here, I'm going to blend the whole dancer so that our ballerinas become even more like shadows or impressions. Alrighty, and there we have it. So I hope you enjoyed painting with me today, painting with pastels, and I hope you enjoyed learning about Edgar Degas. There are some links in the description which have extra activities that you can do and places where you can learn more about this very famous artist. So I hope you enjoyed and have a great day everybody. Thanks for watching.